Okay, for a normal population with a mu of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, what sample mean would identify the extreme scores for a sample of 25 participants? And so let's draw this out first, right? So we have our normal distribution right here, all right? And we have two tails because we want to know the extreme scores. It could be low extreme on this side, right? And it could be the high extreme. Now, extreme, think like 95%. Anything that's not in that middle, 95%. Okay, which means we'll have 2.5 on this side, right? Because you have to, since we have two tails, you gotta split that 5% in half, right? So we have 2.5 on one side and 2.5 on the other side. So again, we're looking for the extreme score. So any score that would qualify to go in the bottom 2.5%, or in the top two and a half percent. We're not necessarily concerned so much about this middle 95%. Okay. So um, point or 2.5% looks like um, 0 0.025 in a decimal. Okay. Um, so this is going to be in the tail. Okay. So um, go down here. So again, look in the tail. 0 0.025, right about, um, right about there, right? Okay. And um, this is on the third page of the unit normal table. So that gives us a z-score of 1.96. So since we have two, we're going to look for negative 1.96, because this is our z-crit, our critical value of z. And our z-crit on the upper end is positive 1.96. Now, um, remember our traditional Z formula, right? Um, which was Z equals um, mean minus mu divided by standard error, right? And standard error equals um, a standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So let's do, um, let's do this one first so that we can find the answer for that one. Okay, so standard deviation um, 15, right? Divided by the square root of 25. So 15 divided by 5. So our standard error is 3. Okay. So um, the, uh, let's see here. Um, we don't necessarily want a z-score. We want an x, a raw score. So we can just modify this formula and, and, and come to this one. Right? It's going to look exact, or it's going to look different, but mathematically it's going to be the same because we're looking for raw scores. So x equals z. Right? And again, we're going to have two z's, a negative and a positive, times standard error, plus whatever that, um, that, that mean is, or whatever that average is. Okay, so let's do, I don't know, let's do the, the top one first. Right? Let's try to find um, this area right here. Okay, so you go um, x equals z, so um, positive 1.96 times 3 plus 100, okay? So the upper end, right, to have an extremely high score, you need a score above 105.88. Right over here is um, 105.88. That would be an extremely high score, okay? Let's do um, the low score now, right? So again, looking for scores. So but this time it's going to be negative 1.96 because we want to look on this end, so the negative side of it, times 3 plus the 100, right? The average, population average. Okay, so our lower end will give us a 94.12 score, okay? So over here, 94.12. Right. So with this one, you're trying to do again, you're trying to find the extreme scores for a sample of 25 participants. Now we had to use this modified um, find the x or find the raw score because if you want to find the z score, just use your z formula, right? But if you want to find a raw score, you're going to have to start with raw score and then whatever that z is, right? times standard error plus your population average. So again, this and this, right, so this is z-score, are mathematically um, equivalent. They're exactly the same. They just look a little bit different, right? Um, it's like, you know, 3 times 5 is equals to 15 versus 15 divided by 5 is 3. It gets you the same place, just a different way to use it.